Hello, everyone. You're back. I see you in the chat. And I am here with Moxie, who ran off to the side, but she will be back. And Dawn. Hi, Dawn. How are you? I'm great. Thank you so much for having me tonight. You're welcome. And we're going to talk about Moxie and we're going to talk about A Tale of Love. So um, can you like just tell us how you even have had Moxie join your family, like that whole journey? Well, we were looking, um, so I've had dogs for years, um, and the Malinois breed was something that I always wanted, um, but mm -hmm. I just didn't have the lifestyle for them. So when we finally made a move outside of, you know, city life of condos and rentals and whatnot, um, I started looking for um, a, a breeder, and we did finally find one after about a good year of searching. Uh, we found a lovely breeder in Louisiana, USA. And, uh, you know, we, we started, we started the trend at that and we waited for the litter and, um, Moxie just, she just stood out in the litter. Um, you know, the videos that the breeders were sending, the pictures, um, I just knew we had to have her. So we had her put on a plane and flown to Buffalo and I drove out there and, uh, nine weeks old, she came home and joined our family. Oh. And it's just been an amazing adventure since then. Now, um, did you know if you wanted a male or female or you just wanted to see a dog that stood out to you? Um, I think I had a preference of a female at that time <clears throat> just because my previous breeds were um, small. So I didn't really want to go to a large male Malinois. Um, so we figured that a female would be a nice start. Uh, you know, it's certainly a breed that needs to fit um, it doesn't fit your lifestyle. You have to fit into its lifestyle. So the breed is very energetic. They're very intelligent uh, and they need a job. So we decided that a female would probably be the best to start with. Um, but if a male popped out and had all the qualities that I wanted, we certainly would have gone the male. Um, but luckily in the litter of boxies, there was uh, actually, I believe it was six females and three males. Uh, in her litter. So yeah, we, we had a really good selection of females at that time. Um, and like I said, she just, she just had that personality that I was looking for. There's always something that I look at, like a sassy temperament, a little pushy temperament. And uh, she has certainly uh, provided us with that for the last, what she's going to be almost eight now. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. She turns eight in August. Oh, now I was wondering, um, did you have other dogs? Did you say you had other dogs before you? you... Yes, actually we had. Um, so I actually started in dogs with Shetland Sheepdogs, okay. um, which I guess are referred to as miniature collies. Um, then we went into, I uh, had some miniature poodles. Um, when I met my husband, he was into Shih Tzus. So we had a couple of Shih Tzus. And then now we have Malinois. So right now we have the three Malinois and one remaining uh, miniature poodle who denim is going to be 14 this year. Oh, wow. So, yes. Yeah. He's getting, he's getting up there. The old boy. <laughs> senior. So you, um, I always wonder how, when you introduce a new dog to the family with the other dogs, I'm sure. And I'm sure you're a pro at it. It, it takes some like them getting used to, because then aren't they territorial or especially when it's a, another female with a female or am I way off base with that? No, we always do a slow introductions with our puppies. Um, first off, most of your adult dogs really don't want puppies chewing on them. You know, they got those nice sharp little teeth. They really don't have a lot of boundaries. So typically for the first several weeks, um, we set up an exercise pen, a little puppy pen in the living room so that the puppy can be in the area, but not harassing our adult dogs. Uh, and of course, they always have their outside time when the adults are put away or whatnot. Um, but that way, the adult dogs can interact, they can get used to the puppy. And then we sort of do a slow interaction, um, always supervised, um, always managing the environment. Um, so we really have not had any issues. Um, you know, we obviously let the adult dogs properly um, discipline the puppies just to make sure that they know there's rules and boundaries, um, which is a great lesson for them to learn by another dog. Um, so yeah, we, we've been very fortunate that all our dogs live in our house. Um, you know, they sleep on our couch, they, you know, lounge around, um, and they do coexist very nicely. I like that story because my friend who helps out with the rescue, she said, 
for some reason, the average person doesn't realize that you can't just throw the animals together and life is okay. (laughs) Yes, there is a lot of management to it. But again, if you do sort of understand um, where the boundary should be, obviously there's times when, you know, this is getting a little out of control. So I will step in and interrupt that behavior um, just to ensure that they know that there are rules in the house that come down from me. Um, so, you know, if, if it's a fair correction, that's fine. If you're being a little cranky that day, that's really not appropriate. So we do have rules and, uh, you know, we do make sure that when we're not home, the dogs do have their own separate space so that, you know, there are no altercations while we're not home. Well, that's true. I wasn't even thinking of that. Um, I've never had more than one dog at a time. I've only just had like one and I don't think I'm the best disciplinarian. I was always, they were spoiled. <laughs> they were well, a pretty good life, but yeah, they do have to have some boundaries. Right. right. I don't think that was good. For, I wasn't good with that. <laughs> they like kind of, I think I was their pet. <laughs> they, yeah. they ran the bruise. Really? I'm serious. I'm curious about, she's an adorable name. How did you come up with the name, Oxy? Actually, it's funny because before we got her, I had a whole bunch of names um, put out, but I always seem to find that once you get the puppy and you start trying these names, um, they just don't suit them. So typically I'm the puppy namer in the house, but seeing as how we were getting a larger breed and a breed that, you know, really was my breed, I wasn't really 100% sure how my husband was going to adapt to a Malinois in the house. So I sort of thought that, this dog was going to be mine and I was going to do all the handling and he would, you know, kind of continue to spoil the little ones. Um, But I decided that he had to have some input in this name. So my husband is very much into antiques. um, And I liked the name Moxie for attitude and personality, Mm -hmm. but Moxie is actually, um, if you pull up Moxie, it's like an antique truck with um, a statue of a horse in it. And the person used to sit on the horse and drive the vehicle that way. So it sort of was a nice combination between me with the sassy name and, you know, uh, powerhouse type thing. Um, But it also kind of blended in uh, the antique side of things that he liked. So it it was a kind of a nice compromise. He compromised on the breed. So I sort of compromised on the name. Actually, that's a a cool story. When we're done, you know me, I'm definitely, I like to research stuff. I'm going to definitely look it up. Yeah, pull up Moxie and you'll see this. It's very unique car with this statue of a horse in the center of it. Um, but actually, Moxie's true name is Top Guns Pushing the Limits at Kazrin. So every purebred dog has a registered name. And okay. uh, again, Pushing the Limits, I named her. She's lived up to it. <laughs> She's definitely very smart um, and gets into some trouble if you if you let her to her own resources. We uh, oh. have a, We have a baby gate in this house that most of my guests cannot open up. It goes into our spare room and we like to keep the dogs out of there. And I would say she probably opens that baby gate two to three times a day just because she can. Um, She's smart. She's She's very smart. And I have tried to replicate what she does to that gate and I can't get it open what she's doing. So I have no idea how she does it. She just has a magic touch. I'm like it that's I love animals and that's like yeah. um people don't like some people the average person I think underestimates how smart you know especially dogs and how intuitive they are too yes. I um when I was first when I first learned about Moxie I was talking with Brittany who you know is the star of a tale Absolutely. of love Moxie and loves she was, Brittany. I know and she was and she loves animals and dogs too she does. she does and she was saying it was like so much fun and she said the best co-star she's ever had and so well prepared was moxie and i'm like what like and she said i thought moxie was just like a dog that was an actor right but she was saying that she was an obedience champion what what exactly is that so an obedience trial champion um in canadian kennel club or american kennel club they have three different levels and Mm -hmm. your dog has to achieve levels in order um and once they pass the first level then they can go on to the second and then the third once they've completed all three, um, they then get the title. Oh, and we have a visitor that we get the title of obedience trial champion. So she has um, managed to do basic uh, obedience, um, which is healing, come on lead, off leash, um, you know, uh, allowing people to examine her, um, healing around people. That's the first level. So it's very basic obedience. 
Um, the second level, they get into retrieving high jumps, um, broad jumps, out of sight stays. So you yeah. line the dogs up, there'll be eight or 10 dogs and um, you tell them to stay and then the owners leave. So the dogs are left by themselves, obviously with the judge and ring stewards. And then once you get to the third level, um, it gets into hand signals. It gets into scent discrimination. They have to find the article with your scent on it. Um, they do signals. They do directional jumping, send away. And all these things actually really came in handy for this movie. I, I was amazed at um, how many things of obedience I actually used for so uh, yeah, it, it was great that she had all that training because originally um, I sort of offered them two dogs um, and I'm glad they, they selected Moxie because my younger male didn't have the same level of obedience as, as Moxie did. And they certainly did utilize a lot of those behaviors. So um, I'm glad they, they, they picked the right dog for that. Hmm. Now, how did, um, how did she even get the job? Like how, how did you come across the uh, part for her? Well, that was really, um, it, it came out of the blue. Okay. So Moxie was not the first dog um, who was actually hired for the part. So we really had no prep um, for, for this, this part. Um, <laughs> we received a phone call on a Thursday um, from a friend of mine, actually, who said, listen, I have, you know, a friend in the, in the movie business and they really are looking for a dog. And the first dog that I thought of was, was you like for, for Moxie. So I was like, Oh, okay. And I had never done film. I had never inquired about film. Um, not really something that I thought I'd ever get into. So ended up telling them, absolutely give me a call. So we got a phone call. They told me what they were looking for. They, they said that they just needed, um, you know, dog with basic obedience, solid, so at that time, I had two of the three that I thought would be appropriate, depending on what they were looking for. Um, Moxie was obviously the seasoned dog because she would have been um, just shy of seven years old at that time. Um, and then Porter, my younger male, was uh, just, I think, about two and a half. So we didn't have the same experiences or the mm -hmm. same height of training as Moxie right. did. But we took all three dogs up because um, they said, well, we need her on set tomorrow. And I was like, oh, um, all right. <laughs> so of course I have a full-time job. Um, so I have an amazing boss who I called him up and said, you know, is it possible to get some time off? I was thinking they only needed me a couple of days, but it ended up being 10 days on set. So a full two weeks. And um, yeah, we went up and met Leaf and uh, Agnes. And that was sort of how it all began. So I hadn't read the script. I didn't have any prep work for her and uh yet we sort of kind of on the spot training Boom. and thankfully she was so adaptable um again we had all the skills but she had never seen um a, a film set she had never sort of been in that environment but since we've trialed her um she's been in very busy noisy you know congested areas um and has been able to handle that so i i didn't have any concerns that she would be able to handle that situation so did yeah. you have to like meet um chris and Brittany? like kind of get to know them D did you do something like that before they we actually did. a scene yes so we did um probably about a 15 minute meet and greet before we we did uh, the first set of shooting um, and it was originally that day was going to be with Chris and Brittany. So yeah, we sort of went through the routine of commands that she listened to, you know, how to properly walk her on a leash and not have her walk them on a leash. Um, you know, because again, if she thinks she's in the lead, she's got quite a bit of power. Right, right, right. <laughs> so, uh, but they were fabulous with her. Um, you know, both of them followed directions so well. Um, they asked questions, um, you know, if they had any concerns about, you know, if she was or wasn't responding, um, you know, they'd check in with me. Um, it, it was really good. And she had never been handed off to anyone. So that was a bit of a concern because, you know, the breed is very attached to the person. So um, again, as long as I was sort of within eye shot of where she knew where I was, she actually responded to them very well. So, um, yeah. Did you... I think you saw one of the uh, promo pictures where there's like a little bit of like a, a personal memorial 
to, I guess, I, I'm, I'm assuming it's the character Indy who she plays, mm -hmm. um, original, I guess, owner, because she was um, a service dog, correct? Yes. Yes. And the little, her little face is looking at the, at the um, photograph. Yeah. I'm like, how do you get her to do those, those kind of little things? Like, I mean, she looks sad and that could be just the photograph, but how, like, do you have like, for instance, someone was working with horses and I think I mentioned this to you in an email and she was saying to get them to react. They had like, she had treats in her, her, um, of course it's a horse. It's different in her uh, pockets or they sprayed an air gun to make the, the horse back up. Were there anything, little things like that, that they had to do with Moxie or does she just is so in sync with you that when you're speaking to her, giving her those commands, that's what, what you used. That, so we actually used one of her tricks. Um, and, and it's so funny because there was one winter where we were going to, you know, I mean, winters, we sort of have a little downtime. Yes. So I wanted to do something to keep her mind stimulated because, you know, in our winters, it gets a little icy and, and hard to get out and run. So we tend to go for mind games with her. And part of that, um, I decided to do a trick class. So tricks is not something I typically um, spend a lot of time on, but a friend of mine was doing a class and I was like, yeah, you know what? That'll be great for her. One of the tricks was what we call heads down. And it just means that she will put her head down on anything that either the floor or a table or a lap or whatever. So that trick came in handy for a lot of, a, a lot of the, the sessions of the, of the film. Um, I was amazed at how many times I actually had her do that trick. And she is masterful at it. Like she absolutely loves it. And the lower her head goes, the sadder the eyes look because she'll look up to for direction. And uh, that was one of the things that when we first met Leaf and, and Agnes, um, you know, they just sort of asked what she could do. And that was one of the things that we did. And I'm pretty sure that was what really said, yeah, this is the dog we need. Because there was that scene um, that it just worked beautifully for. So, mm -hmm. but I would probably say we used that heads down for, I'm going to say at least seven or eight scenes, if, if, if I can recall correctly. Mm -hmm. So it worked really well. That's cute. Any cute little stories behind the scenes, like any little bonding moments between, you know, any of the actors and Moxie? Um, I know that's on the spot. You got to remember because it's like been forever and a day since it was right. There was one funny part and Brittany may kill me for telling you this. She won. But... She won. She won. <laughs> we all had a good laugh at Brittany's expense on this. But when we actually first um, did the 15 minute introduction, um, Brittany was walking her up and back just because there was going to be a scene um, where she had to take her up a driveway or something. Sure. And uh, so, you know, we were working on commands and whatnot. So when she came back, everything seemed fine. Brittany had a handful of food and we were just sitting and chatting. And, you know, Brittany was sort of waving her hands around a bit as she was talking. Well, of course, Moxie's sitting looking at this handful of food and she sees the hand moving. Well, Moxie does a smile on command. So all of a sudden she was like, well, you got food and your hands moving. So I'm assuming that's my smile command. So all of a sudden full teeth come out and Brittany sort of takes a step back. <laughs> and I couldn't help but start laughing. And Brittany sort of looked at me, you know, kind of oddly, like, why are you laughing at this? And I said, well, you just gave her the command to smile. Oh. Like, what do you mean? So we showed her the, the actual command. And I said, she obviously misinterpreted your hand movement as wanting a smile because she wanted the food that was in your hand. So anyways, that then became the trick for the next 10 days that they would do with her on the downtime um, because, you know, she, she loves doing it. It's something that we taught her when she was probably about seven months old. Oh my gosh. Um, she, she would offer the behavior. So I just conditioned it. And we finally put it to a command. And it's something that actually even our veterinarian does with her every time she goes in for a vet exam. I because, love it. Yeah, it's just something. So we'll, we'll see if we can get her to do it on screen. I don't know if you'll be able to see it uh, so well on the screen, yeah. but we'll see if we can get her to, to give everyone a smile today. That's cute. Now, we have quite a few um, Brittany fans here. 
And we definitely have quite a few of Chris fans here. So I'm going to ask this question before we move on. Um, how was Chris and Moxie? Did they bond? <laughs> Chris had to work hard. <laughs> I will say she made Chris work really, really hard. And I don't know what it was, but she just most most girls would fawn over Chris like I mean you know everyone yeah. loves Chris but Moxie was like you need to work for it so by the end yes but I will say poor Chris tried anything and everything to make her just love on him right 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 um but you know the breed's not like that like they're not like a golden retriever or something who really shows affection other than to their owner so, um, you know, for the scenes where we really needed that connection, um, he, he's definitely worked hard. <laughs> we he had, hard. you know, food in pockets. We had peanut butter. And she was like, yep, here's my butt yeah. scratching. You know, oh. she, <laughs> she and loves I'm sure, butt scratches. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he was okay with it because he's really good with dogs. He loves his two dogs. He was amazing. He yeah. was, you know, I, the one um, concern that, I mean, everyone has is like, I've never yeah. handed her off. And again, the breed, you know, isn't, mm -hmm. uh, you know, overly social um, as far as, you know, strangers. Um, right. You know, she's very tolerant. She's very solid, um, mm -hmm. which is great in this breed. But she's never really cared to go socialize with strangers. Um, you know, if they're there, she's fine. She's accepting of them. They can touch her, but she never like, you know, golden retriever, whatnot says, Oh, please pet me, please pet me. Mm -hmm. Whereas these guys are like, you're there. That's fine. You exist. We're good. But that's it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Chris worked hard. He did an amazing job with her. And actually, if it wasn't for the real cuddly scenes type thing, she responded really well with them. So work wise, she respected him. She liked working with him. He was good about his reward system. Um, so he did an excellent job. Um, but I told him right from the get go, not really, she's a very serious dog. She's a working dog and she's just not into that whole lovey dovey. Lovey -dovey. That's exactly. okay. <laughs> yeah, well, and that's okay because, because you're her owner and she loves you. you exactly. Know. Yes. We have a very special bond. Um, you know, it, it, it's something that she is, there's, there's always those special heart dogs and she's mm -hmm. definitely one of my heart dogs. I love yeah. that. I love dogs so much. I had a heart dog and, and, and I would, I never got another dog after that. That was, Aww. I was done. I know. I just, I just couldn't imagine anymore. But, um, and my sister's like, you gave up. And I'm like, your dog Roxy is like my dog. She named her dog after me. My name's Roxanne. <laughs> the dog's name is Roxy. Now is that bizarre? Wow. That's a whole other story in itself. <laughs> we don't need to know about my life. But anyway, <laughs> I am just like, I know what you're saying by it being, you know, she's your heart dog. Yeah. I love that. Um, I was thinking you're going to be live tweeting. No. Yes. Do you tweet on Twitter? Do I do account? not tweet. No, okay. I, I do not. Um, but we do have a Facebook page, um, for oh, my, okay. for our, our breeding kennel. Um, we don't breed often, but, uh, we're called Kazrin, which is C-A-S-R-Y-N. So we do have a Facebook page, Kazrin Belgian Malinois. Um, and there you would see all of our dogs, the things that they're doing. Um, Moxie is a mother to 10 lovely puppies. So we often have updates there on um, how they're doing with their new families, what activities they're involved in, because um, eight out of the, sorry, nine out of the 10 um, are actively in some type of performance sport. Um, wow. So, Yes, yes. They are a breed that, again, needs a job. So, yes. um, you know, we had one that went to a friend of mine who's on uh, a lot of acreage. So they're very outdoorsy people. They're very active. So they hike and whatnot. And we are in constant uh, communication just to make sure that her training is, is staying on track. So she's just an active pet. Um, but the rest of them do have a job of some type. Now, um, I, I think just for one minute, I know people are asking what is the um, website again. I do have it and I will I will post it, I promise, because I think I figured it out. I think I found it when we were communicating back and forth. So I will put that out for everyone. Don't worry. We'll, I'll put yeah, it there no. for you. <laughs> now, I was also wondering if um, is there any way that you can get her on to the it's I am um, DB it's the um, it, it's I think it's internet um, movie database I think that's what the I part stands for have you ever seen that 
where you type no, that I don't in. Think so. Okay, so it is an actual like website. And if you put in the movie, A Tale of Love, it lists all of the actors and whatnot. And she should be on there. She's with her picture if you wanted. And and yeah. that's all that it is. If you, when you have like a hot minute, you should look it up and um, see how you can get her on because that would be cool. People would want to look and see. And you'll see Britney's on there. Chris is on there. All of the actors, um, Leaf is mentioned and, um, Agnes, all of them, they, they do everything about a particular movie. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, I will absolutely look into that. Because it, it's so nice that, uh, you know, her bio is up on the Hallmark. So I know. That, that was really yeah. sweet. I know. Isn't that great? I love it. Now, um, I was wondering if, I said a lot of ums, I'm catching myself over here. Does she have any plans, like, or do you have any plans for more movies with, with her? Well, again, I wasn't expecting this one. So, um, you know, certainly the, the dogs are available if, um, you know, there there is a need. But yeah. I have not been, um, you know, connected to any Wranglers or anything like that. So it really may just be that if someone sees this movie and there's a need for another Malinois with their skill sets, then I would absolutely um, be interested. Uh Leaf was just amazing to work with his team, um, everyone, like every every single member of, of that team and the cast, the crew, um, they, they were incredible. They made me feel welcome. Um, anything that I needed, uh, they, they just got on it right away. And again, the treatment of her was phenomenal. I, I couldn't have asked for a, a better producer uh, to do work with her. So, and and again, the cast, like they just followed directions so well, listened to, you know, what she was sensitive about, you know, what would trigger her um, as far as her high arousal. Um, and, you know, we were able to keep that at bay because there, there were certain things that, you know, sort of got her into a higher zone and we needed to make sure we kept her at a low zone for set. <laughs> I saw I saw um, a photo shoot where they had some other puppies that were in their arms that they were holding. I don't know if that was all at the same time, but she yes. was she okay. It was at the same time. It was yes, <laughs> and and she and she knows to ignore other dogs. She will have yeah. no desire to look at another dog because again we compete, so we're around dogs all the time. Um, but the one criteria was do not let the puppies on the ground because she okay. is not a, even though she's a mother, she is not a puppy person. Mm. So, uh, you know, we made sure that those, those puppies were wonderful and sweet. Um, but we made sure that they kept a, a good distance away from her because she's done with the puppies. That's okay. And she was the star, you know, we had to. Yeah, well, yeah. 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 I think that went to her head a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> There's a funny scene where, um, or is it JR? I think that's what I think that's um Chris's character's name. Anyway, yes. he is in the uh rescue and he's eating, he thinks like they're cookies, and she's like, You do realize they're dog cookies. It's like, oh yes, I know. Yes. I mean, it, I th which I think is funny. But I was thinking about when the actors are there, they usually have special things for them to eat that they like, you know, like their rider, you call it, or or the, you know, the um the food section. Did they do any of that for you or was that left up to you yourself? Like have special treats, snacks, because those were long hours. Like, oh my goodness, they, they fed you all day long. Yeah. You, you honestly, there's no way you could have ever left that set hungry. Um, they just, they had a snack wagon, they had catered lunches. They, I, I just couldn't believe the amount of, um, you know, catering that they did for everyone. Like there was drinks on hand you were absolutely made sure that you were taken care of. And yes, the hours were very long. Yeah. Um, you know, I give credit to anyone who works in that industry full time. They are very long hours and we were not required on set for the full day. Like some of them were. Yeah. And, uh, but I mean, there was one night, I think we wrapped at, uh, it's probably about midnight or 1230 in the morning because yeah. we were doing some night scenes. We didn't have to be there until I think it was 11 o'clock in the morning or something like that at that day. But yeah, it's it, it's real eye opener to see what that industry does. They're very hard workers. They're very dedicated, um, and you just really will never look at a movie the same way once you're once you're behind the scenes. <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, I was um, going to like share some uh, like questions, or sometimes people showing you some love. This is 
I don't, is this someone that you might know? Because I do. Like, okay. That is my cousin. <laughs> oh, that gorgeous gal knows she's being talked about. Is there any um, possibility before we say goodnight to each other that we'll get a chance for her to pop back on, you think? Absolutely. Moxie, okay. you come on up here. Moxie, come. come. Good turn, sit. There you go. We'll put the camera on her. Moxie. This is Moxie. Hi, Moxie. You get to do the smile. Back up. Back up. Good smile. 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 Yes, good girly. Very nice. Smile for us. Yeah, you give me five. She says, I can give five. She says, but she says, oh, give five. there you Look go. Look at her. Girl. If we're such a little space. I don't really know how much I can get her to do in a chair. Well, that was amazing. Just what you did now. Yeah. She says, DJ, can you go up? Max, head, head. Good. Oh. So this is her head trick. So she will not, again, the, arm, the arm's not the best thing, but she does that. That is her head trick. So, oh. and she will put her head on just about anything. So floor, table, leg. There was actually one scene where um, we had to, where Brittany was sitting um, and they wanted her to put her head on her lap. And um, that was, that was easy. She just, Put her head there, and I told her stay, and and that's where she stayed. <laughs> so girl, she's, she's we'll just, she is an amazing girl. She's going a little gray, you know, with her age, but uh, it's not too too bad. She kind of matches me now. Hey, up. Oh, so Janice is asking a question, and I'm clicking the. I'm watching Moxie, and I'm clicking the <laughs> the wrong thing. She wanted to know if you have like a strict diet for Moxie. Um, we are very good about portion control and whatnot, but we do, uh, we used to feed raw, um, and that was something that we did, uh, for quite a long time, but we actually have switched back to a uh, kibble based food. Um, of course they always get a little extra on their uh, meals as far as like raw egg or, you know, cooked chicken, whatnot. Um, they occasionally enjoy a nice turkey neck, raw turkey necks. Um, but a, a well-balanced kibble diet does them good, um, keeps their weight nice, their muscle, skin tone, um, you know, coat. So, yeah, that's what we've gone to now. It's just easier for traveling, um, you know, because we do tend to do a bit of that. Is there any type of fruit in, in, their, in her diet or their diet? They love fruit. So when a banana gets peeled off of the bunch, they can be anywhere in this house. They hear it. They smell it. I don't know what it is, but they are at my husband's feet. So he typically has a banana usually, you know, every evening before bed. And uh, I think he might get a quarter of the banana and the dogs get about <laughs> three quarters, at least not half. Um, but they love all fruit. So melons, um, oh, wow. apples, uh, bananas. Um, you know, obviously we stay away from grapes because those are not good for dogs. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they, they are pretty good. The only thing, she is not a vegetable dog. Um, mm. so if it's cooked, she'll eat it, but typically she's not really much for raw vegetables. Um, my other dogs absolutely adore them. So, mm. but you know, you give her a vegetable and she almost thinks you're trying to poison her. <laughs> That's funny. Isn't that funny how they, they actually have their own little taste buds and personalities, just like humans, you know? Oh, absolutely. And, and if, there is something this dog doesn't like. You are going to know it. If this dog is something she wants, you are going to know it. She is a very, very pushy girl, um, mm. but very devoted, very loving, and, again, very mm. smart. Um, there were things on that scene that um, we really weren't prepared for. Um, we would have five, ten minutes, um, you probably about more like five minutes to, to prep her, get her used to sort of the pattern of what we wanted her to do mm -hmm. or whatnot, and she picked it up so quickly. You know, we, we do do clicker training with her. Um, so, you know, if she indicated something that I wanted, we'd click feed. And she just then started putting things together pretty quickly. Wow. So it was, I never, ever thought this dog would be able to amaze me again, because she's done such amazing things up to this point in her life. But for that movie, I, I truly, like, she just couldn't have done a better job. Um, like so i'm sorry go ahead no worries no worries but it, it's just there was things that i was like i don't think this is gonna work and she just was like ta-da we <laughs> they were like, like okay cut <laughs> we're so excited to see it um janice also said i think moxie may have been playing hard to get with chris <laughs> i think so she definitely wanted to make sure that you know he knew that she was worth the catch 
I yeah, think yeah, that yeah. was at the end. But in the end, we actually got um, an amazing photo of the two of them. And they really did finally connect, um, which was which was great to see. And I think Chris felt a little better at that because he really worked hard. Um, and again, you know, for the every other scene, it was fine. But when he had to sort of get down and into her face, she was like, nope, not happening. Yeah. She's done. She's done. Yeah. Janine Marie, she wants to know if it's grain or grain free kibble. No, we do grain. Um, you have to be very careful about grain free. Um, there is some association with um, DM um, heart issues. So, we, yeah, definitely it's, it's fully inclusive food. And thankfully, we don't have any allergies or sensitivities in our dogs. Um, you know, I know some people have to struggle with grains or chicken base, whatnot. Right, right. Um, thankfully, our dogs uh, have no allergies, so they're pretty good. We do feed a uh, food called TLC, um, mm -hmm. and they've excelled on that. So they've done really well. We have nice coats. We have good muscle tone and energy unlimited so thankfully we have two and a half acres so uh you know the dogs definitely get out and, and get their runs every day and i wish i could be as fit as they are <laughs> <laughs> don't we all <laughs> i know like, i have the energized dogs i try to keep up to them but uh yeah, yeah thankfully they they have that additional when uh, i can't keep up with them and just showing you some love um they're just all excited um, it says heart dogs are the best dogs. That's what Lynn was saying. They are. They absolutely are. And when you get them, you cherish them yeah. because they, they definitely are hard to find. But, uh, and we have her daughter, um, Jules. Um, Jules oh. actually helped us out a little itty bit uh, in the movie. Um, and she would have been, I think she would have been about 16 months at that time. So she was young. But Moxie and her look quite a bit the same. So, uh, you know, we were able to sort of oh. slide her in for a very little snippet that we were having a hard time. Moxie sort of, I think, hit her wall at that point that day. And we just needed one little 20 second thing. And I'm like, oh, we could just sort of. <laughs> so Jules is uh, in, in the movie just a little snidge. Oh, well, that's wonderful yeah. to know. I love that. Yeah. I saw Jules. I think it must have been on your website. I, I, I saw um, the name and that's what grabbed my attention. Je yes. Janine Marie, again, she was saying she's a wonderful uh, girl. Thank you for sharing her with us. And then someone, um, I starred something. Okay. And this is Linda. She says, will Moxie make any pre-premiere appearances? So I guess like, um, I, I, I think promotional wise, I know Hallmark does promotional things. I think that's what Linda's asking. I didn't know if um, she's wondering if she'll be interviewed again. <laughs> that I'm not sure of. Um, okay. You know, certainly we are open to that. We love sharing Moxie's story. Um, and, you know, Moxie absolutely loves the attention. Mm -hmm. So if it's something that's approached, we absolutely are open to that. But uh, there hasn't right. been anything uh, arranged as of yet. Yeah. All so. right. Oh, thank you so much for spending time with us. This oh, is really thank nice. you for having us. This has been wonderful. And I can't wait for the movie. This is this is something we are now on the countdown for. Right. I don't know if we get to see it before you all do, um, seeing time in Canada. But, uh, you know, so I, I'm going to try to find someone who can get the U.S. channel. <laughs> Well, we get it. I know because we'll see it on the um, on the Hallmark Channel, and I forget how that works by you. Sometimes it takes you a little longer to be able to see it. I know. So this I is know. Moxie's daughter. This is Jules. Oh, Jules so, looks yes. very much like her mommy. She does. She's very much like her mama. That's how we kind oh, of wow. sort of got away with it. She just doesn't have the gray. Hey, girl. Hi, Jules. So Look she just her. turned two, and she's uh, she's in training. Now Moxie's like, no, no, this is not fair. <laughs> Come on. Say your wife. There you go. There they are. <laughs> oh, both of them together. <laughs> everyone saying good night, girls. Say good night. <laughs> good night, everyone. Thank you so much for including us in this. We've really enjoyed it. Oh, thank you, everyone. I will um, be seeing you later on. I have um, more of the cast coming on. Just stay tuned and be on the lookout for it. All right. Good night. Good night.